Hi there, my name's uh, Tim, CEO of Hive. Uh, sorry I'm not uh, dressed well. We've been, we've been pumping concrete today, but Jared was kind enough to come by and, and show you one of our other finished houses. So this is the biggest one we've done, uh, 3,150 square feet. It's uh, just outside of uh, Brenham, Texas. It's uh, currently for sale right now. We're real proud of it. So this one used our old gantry style printer. Um, we use a different style printer now. Uh, these are uh, 12 inch thick uh, printed walls, 10 feet tall. Uh, they're filled in with uh, foam creep. Uh, and so they're monolithic. Uh, should be one of the strongest houses uh, ever built around here and should last, last forever. Some cool features on the outside. Uh, architects always complain about how gutters kind of ruin their uh, their facades, so we were able to print uh, these little uh, these little notches for the gutters. They sit flush up against the house. Um, coming through here, um, let me get into the uh, get into the lockbox here. Uh, so we did, went with kind of a medium high finish on this house. Um, you might see some of the other videos. We did some more basic houses in round top that were meant to be really affordable. This one's kind of on the higher end of, of medium. Wait till the end of this video to see the round top houses complete. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so I got kind of big, uh, big open, open living area. I really like the views out of these windows. They did a really good job uh, placing the windows and capturing this kind of cool uh, countryside view we have. It's just sitting on an acre and a half uh, out here in the county. It's a uh, it's a pretty um, pretty pretty good real estate market out here for these types of uh, bigger country homes for the people looking to get outside of Houston. Um, if you look up there, that's uh, it's about an eight nine hundred square foot loft area. The kind of concept behind that is everything is kind of polished and hard down here on the first floor, and on the second floor, that's uh, carpeted and kind of a softer space. Uh, Walking through here, a um, little half bath over there. Um, coming through here, we were, um, you know, we had some fun with this house with the different uh, pigments and designs on this wall. So uh, the, actually the whole house is colored this way if we didn't paint it. Um, but we uh, left this wall kind of the original colors where we were using a powdered concrete pigment and then a parametric design just to uh, add some, some cool accents and features. Uh, the nice thing about 3D printing is you can do this type of stuff without adding, you know, cost or expense or time. It's just a matter of um, programming a different model into the, uh, into the computer. So I guess we can go back through here, which is the master bedroom. Master bedroom through here. Primary bath, pretty normal stuff. So from, uh, from what we can tell, this is one of the bigger um, single family 3D printed houses uh, that we've seen. Uh, I think there's some bigger buildings, uh, but uh, as far as single family ones, I haven't really seen a bigger one. Uh, there's one- In Houston, one, under construction. Under construction, there's the big one in Houston, but that one is, you know, is uh, not finished yet. So we, we beat them to the punch line, mm -hmm. uh, to the punch on this, I guess. These are the um, secondary bedrooms in here. Um, the second bath in there. Yeah, you guys did a great job with the finish and also the landscaping looks incredible. Yeah, yeah, that was PLM uh, land management out of, uh, out of uh, Brenham, they did a good job. Who's the architect? Uh, architect is uh, Ordinary Architecture Practice and it's Bradley Hurtis. So he's uh, <laughs> um, one of our kind of early members of our com company. What an ironic name. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, backyard pool could use a cleaning, uh, but uh, but this is uh, this is the backyard, and then they have all the all the um, the rest of the acreage out this way. And this is kind of this this breezeway. You get a nice breezeway, cardboard plus the garage. Yeah, plus the yeah. There's a there's a garage in here. Nothing too exciting in the garage except and it's a mess in here. Um, 
camera won't see below your waist anyway. <laughs> right. Um, the one exciting thing about the garage is um, over, that, um, over that garage, that lintel, that's a 3D printed lintel. So that was a real challenge to, to print that whole lintel in place. And so put a rebar cage up into it and pour concrete in the middle of it um, all in place out there. And it's like 20 something feet span, which was a, it's a challenge. Yeah, that's incredible. So what are you guys listing this house at? It's right now listed at uh, 719. Uh, we may do 700 here sometime uh, before too long. We've got a lot of room at it uh, on it. Um, and that's well below comps to this area. It's kind of a um, uh, higher cost area for homes. And so for this square footage and, um, you know, with a pool, it's, uh, it's a lot less expensive than anything else you could get uh, this size. Well, that's great to hear. And it's an awesome project. You guys definitely deserve to make some money on it. And it's good to see that you didn't stop here. A lot of companies print one home and they move on. You guys printed five more in round top. We'll go take a look at right now. Yeah, and then we've got, uh, and then we're working on another big one like this out near Austin. Uh, then we're moving on to a little school in Houston after that. We're going to do nine houses in Marfa starting in a couple months. Uh, and then we've got four in, uh, in Houston area, um, some, mixed somewhere in there. So lots of projects. Uh, got four printers going here in the next couple months. So we're, we're trying to ramp up fast. Awesome. Well, check out the link in the description and see if it's still available for sale. Maybe one of you will be the lucky home buyer. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, well, uh, see, so these are the five ones we did in round top. These are meant to be little rental units, um, so they get bigger as we go. So these first ones are little studio apartments, uh, and then we have one bedrooms, and then we have a, a two bedroom, uh, two bath down at the end. And so these were designed to be kind of super stripped down, super affordable. Uh, the cost to the client on this one was uh, 45,000, and then the one bedrooms were 55 and then the, the big one was uh, 75. And you so, guys really put in a lot of sweat equity yourselves to uh, keep it to pretty much just your material costs. and. Well, the... yeah, I mean, we made like a dollar. We barely made any money on it, but we did, uh, you know, we, we covered all our expenses. We covered, you know, a, a kind of a slave wage for the, the people that are out here working. But um, your very yeah. first project, too. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. And this so. Five little ones. I would say the material cost in these was about, for the little ones, it was about $5,500 worth of concrete, and the big one was about $7,500 worth of concrete. Mixing on site yourself? Mixing all on site with the truck. You know, a lot of that's the $40 cubic yard sand, which it mostly is. Uh, and the big expenses were just the roofs. You know, I think we paid 15000 for each one of these roofs. Which to find a true uh, comparable material cost, you'd probably need to add the uh, equipment and also the human labor that went into achieving the the printable material from the independent ingredients. Right. I mean, we, we account for labor separately, but the equipment we don't really account for on this project. So we don't have the capital costs in there. But uh, as far as what we actually bought, that's that's what the, the equipment costs were. And so this one, this little one, we did a stucco finish. We were just experimenting with different finishes. This is like a one coat stucco, probably needs another coat at some point. Um, but that's kind of if you don't like layers or whatever, you can um, uh, put that stucco on it. These were also the first houses that we used uh, the cement replacement product that we use. So there's no cement in these houses. It's all 100% it's all, uh, fly ash, pasta slag. So it's kind of a new material it was for us. Uh, now we're you know, pretty experienced with it. We're, we're building a big house with it right now and it's probably the direction we're gonna go in the future. But it's uh, low cost, it's carbon friendly uh, and, it, and it prints, which is, uh, you know, kind of an edge. We can step in this one real quick. These are all still kind of a mess. We're not, you know, they're not ready to, obviously, to rent out yet. We just have one renter and one of the ones on the end. But um, you can kind of see a little bit what they look like on the inside. We got, uh, <laughs> um, so they're moving furniture and stuff in here. But, uh, yeah, this is just a little efficiency that we have. Um, and uh, and the, the other ones are a little bit bigger. Nice, it's very cool in here. Yeah, so the, um, these are all run off of 50 amp RV plugs. So, you know, the, the walls are pretty, pretty energy efficient. They're filled with, uh, with a perlite concrete, which is like a foam creep, but we replaced the foam with perlite this time to give it a little bit more strength and make it a little easier to mix. All floor to ceiling windows? Yeah, so we separated out the sections. So like, since we're using a little printer on these, like that's one section and this is one section and that's one section. So it's kind of printed in, in three sections. Nice. And the windows separate it.
And will these be listed on Airbnb or rented out? Yeah, they're just uh, they're short term rentals, so it's mostly Airbnb. This is an event venue here, um, so they do shows and stuff, and and these are just uh, for the people going to the shows. So this truck you have, you're also able to do the backfilling with. Right. So right now we're mixing for this last one. We're mixing the lightweight to fill these walls, nice. uh, which is you know so we'll mix it in that truck, uh, and yeah, that's just a little pump that we we pump it with. It's. It's kind of a, um, for these little ones, it's fine. For the bigger houses, we'll, we'll use like a real pump truck instead of that little, that little mixing pump. And that's what you're doing here today, backfilling this third unit? Yeah, we're backfilling the, the third one today. Um, and then we're back to our big house out in, uh, in Round Rock that we're working on now. And so Very we nice. got a renter in this one right now, so we can't really go in that one. Uh, and then this is the, this is the biggest one, um, but it doesn't have any furniture in it or anything. Nice, much different trim and finish. A little bit different, yeah. Um, so this one is the, uh, it's two bedrooms, two bath. Um, it was, to the client, it was 75. You know, we can hit those types of price points. It's about 800 square feet, so real little. Not intended to be like a house, intended to be a rental. Uh, another cool thing about this one is the ceiling. So I can come show you this product on the outside. These are SIP panels. So as we're moving to this kind of uh, printed and bolted together system, the idea is everything we don't print is prefabricated. So we don't, you know, kind of just keep pushing down on the, uh, on the on-site labor uh, or on the kind of uh, skilled labor you need on site. And so part of that process is using these uh, pre-made panels for the roofs and whatever wall connections we need uh, outside of the roofs. You call this a two bedroom, right? Yeah, it's one and two over here. So it's nice. two bedroom, one bedroom, one bath, one bedroom, and there's a bathroom over there. Two, two bed, two bath, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for showing me around. Sure, no problem.